Hello there. Today we're going to be looking at classification. I'm going to go fairly quickly, so make sure to pause the video if you have any questions. Look at this. See an enemy, ugly, colorful beetle, beautiful background, worm, snaky thing, moving jellyfish. These are all different animals, and scientists like to put these things into categories based on, I don't know, what they look like, maybe how they're related, how they evolved, lots of different ways, but uh, we need a naming system, right? So here comes this dude named Carolus Linnaeus, and he comes up with the binomial system of nomenclature. That's a fancy way to say two names, a two name. Binomial kind of sounds like two names, two name system of nomenclature, another fancy word for uh, naming things, binomial system of nomenclature. Every species has two names. Can you guess what our human binomial system of nomenclature name is? What do we call humans? That's right. Homo sapiens. Homo means it's our genus classification, G-E-N-U-S, and sapiens is referring to our species classification. There's a Homo sapiens right there. Homo is the genus, sapiens is the species, and we always underline or italicize. Okay, when you're typing, you can italicize, but if your handwriting is already really slanted, then you can underline it if you're handwriting this uh, in an essay or doing some classification of your own in your garden. Okay? Every living thing, every organism that's been identified by humans has a name. So here we have some bacteria. One of the most common bacteria around, uh, all these different types of bacteria have a name. This one happens to be called E. coli. See if you can figure out what that E stands for. There's a reason why we abbreviate it. Well, it's a really long name, but E. coli is the famous bacteria. There's plenty of it in your digestive system. So the E stands for Esterichia. I hope I'm saying that right. Esterichia is the genus name, and coli here is the species name. All right, everything that's out there that we've identified has been categorized like this. The thing is, that's only two parts of the name, Homo sapiens. There's actually more to it, so let's take a look. Okay, first of all, remember this. King Philip came over for good spaghetti. Or you can make something else up, like kangaroo parties. Okay, never mind. Make up your own. King Philip came over for good spaghetti. That has always helped me. Uh, here's a dandelion, and there are two humans on horses. All right, fantastic. King Philip came over for good spaghetti is to help you remember this, which is the different ways of classification. These are different levels of hierarchy for uh, these taxa, and taxonomy is what we're basically calling the study of classification. So uh, animals, humans are an animal, and animal is a type of kingdom. Chordata is a type of phylum. Mammalia is a type of class. Prima, order, ominidae. So basically the full classification of a human, and here's the sad part, you need to know all of this. I know you can just look this stuff up really easily, but you're expected to know two full classifications. So human, you can kind of figure out the majority of it. You know you're an animal, right? You're not a plant, you're not a bacteria. So you can figure this out here. Uh, that's one full classification for human. Other organisms out there, not so nice. Check this out, dandelion. Try to read all these. Dandelions belong to the kingdom called Plantae, the phylum called Tracheophyta, the class called Angiospermae, the order called Asteralis, the family called Asteraceae, the genus called Pterothacum, and the species Officinal. Pterothacum Officinal. I hope I said that right. I used a little TH thing going on right there, Pterothacum. I hope that's right. It's probably wrong, but doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure if you spell this 90% correct, you'll still be okay. But anyways, really, really complicated, right? But that's how we name all the different living things that are out there. Five kingdoms, you've learned this before. Animals, plants, bacteria, fungi, protists. You need to know six different phyla for animals. And they're listed right there. And, and four different phyla for plants. These names, platal helminths, arthropoda, periphera, analyta. Oh, 
a spelling mistake here. That's an H, not an M. Platal helmet, Al arthropoda periphera, analyta, nidaria. Notice there's a C, but it's silent. Nidaria, mollusca, bryophyta, philocenophyta, angiospermophyta, coniferophyta. The best thing to do is to learn what types of animals these are what types of plants these are, and come up with a clever way to remember how it goes. I'll give you one, one example here. Uh, Nidaria, what kinds of animals are these? Well, jellyfish actually fit into this phyla here. So how do I remember this? Well, there's a silent C here, so I say jellyfish are silent but deadly. That helps me to remember. And I need to learn a few things that go along here. The next few slides, I'm not going to talk through them but you can take a look. You know, also refer to your textbook uh, or any other materials that you have there. Platal helmets, I think of plates. Plates are flat, so guess what these are? Flatworms. Yucky. Yucky. But great to read about. Okay, try that out for all the rest of these. Those are the plant phyla. These are the animal phyla. Look at these beautiful pictures. Each one of these is a phyla. Come back and test yourself. Uh, there's no labels here, so you have to learn the animal phyla, come back, and then try to point out which is which, all right? And the animal phyla and a few important characteristics about each. Okay, this is the second time recording this video. Stupid computer crashed last time. But anyways, don't forget to post your questions. You must post your questions and uh, show me your notes. See you later. Oops.